Aloha. Good morning. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is Federal Criminal Investigations of Trump. Well, I think it's fair to say that this has never been done before. Even with Richard Milhouse Nixon, he was never federally investigated by the Department of Justice. Bill Clinton had his problems, but the DOJ did not actually formally investigate Bill Clinton. So the first time in presidential history, I think we have a new one here, and that is Donald Trump is formally being investigated by the Department of Justice, specifically the uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland. Uh, to my guests, good morning. Uh, Jay Fidel, co-host, and our regular contributor, Winston Welch. Good morning. Good morning. Uh -huh. Jay, you know, I don't have to go far back in our memory banks and our, our previous shows to, to report that you and I and maybe a couple other guests would um, refer to Merrick Garland, our attorney general, as the following. AOL, AWOL, MIA, missing in action, um, out to lunch. Are you surprised that Merrick Garland has been working in the uh, behind the curtains, behind the scenes, that actually has been investigating Donald Trump? Are you, were you surprised by this uh, interview with Lester Holt on NBC and the Washington Post's article? Mm, somewhat. <laughs> Come on, Jay. <laughs> you know, don't get too excited about this. The fact is that in May, he signed that, the end of May, he signed that for Schlugan a memo and said, oh, I need to follow, um, um, you know, Bill Barr's uh, policy and we can't go after anybody who is uh, running for president. That's only May. It's only a few months ago, really. Um, geez, it's three months ago. That's all it is. Um, and then, of course, don't forget that um, the reports uh, to Lester Holt and others about how he was um, examining witnesses from, you know, the, 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 the White House, the, the top levels of the White House, um, that only happened a few days ago. That didn't happen, you know, right after May or even before May. Um, so I'm not surprised in the sense that, you know, I believe there had to be, I told you this before, there had to be a conversation along here somewhere where Joe Biden says, hey, my popularity is going down and people are really um, not happy with you, Merrick. You've got you to tell them you're doing something. So Merrick told us that he was doing something. Well, I don't see this as a huge, big revelation. I think it was politically necessary for him to say this and to call Lester Holt and his you know, media friends and say, I think I'd like to have an interview now mm -hmm. um, and then make statements that are supposed to give the public some confidence. And remember back um, when this happened last time and people were criticizing Merrick, uh, he gets up there and he used the same language. We will follow the evidence wherever it goes. Um, we are, you know, not going to hold back and blah, blah, blah. Were you comforted I, I, by that statement? Were you comforted when Lester Holt said, you know, this, this investigation could potentially tear the country in two? Were you comforted that his response was, yes, and I'm concerned about that, which he didn't say, but he said, we are going to follow the evidence to no matter where and who it goes to. I was comforted by hearing that. Were you? I'm happy for you. Um, yes, me too. But, I'm very pleased for myself. But let me but were say, you, that, were you comforted? <laughs> I, I am. I am not confident that uh, Merrick Garland's investigation is going to move that quickly. That we already know it hasn't moved very quickly. Um, this is this is fresh now, and uh, I don't think he's been running a parallel to the um, select committee. Um, I'm not sure how aggressive he really well, is. And, and, and I, fear, I fear he does not fully understand that, you know, although we certainly appreciate his care and caution, um, his, 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 what do you call it, his moderate approach to things, but, but the fact is that voting has already started. Uh, you know, I already voted myself, I'll tell you that now. And a lot of states, people have already voted. And, um, you know, sure, there are glimmers of hope, which we will hear from, Winston about that, um, you know, that maybe maybe the GOP is changing its tune, but those are glimmers. We still have a huge base in this country, and Trump, for all his continued lying, is still doing it. So I'm not sure this investigation, that is Merrick Garland's investigation, is going to get to a point where it has, the, you know, the necessary effect 
Um, a lot of people say, well, if there's an indictment, that'll change the way the base thinks. Really? Will it? They love him. They still love him. Uh, or a lot of people say, if he gets into a, a jury trial, if he winds up in trial, and, and don't be so sure the trial's going to happen right away. Um, you know, I mean, he is a master at delaying, deferring, deterring, and derailing legal proceedings all his life. Yeah, I, I'd like actually, to address the uh, 50 ways. Make one more point. A lot of yeah. people say that right now, today, there is evidence that would convict him right now from what we have all seen on television. But whether that gets in front of a jury in time to make a difference is another question. Good point. And later in the interview, I'd like to talk about the 50 ways that Donald Trump can leave uh, Merrick Garland in, in the dust in, in all the attempts of the Department of Justice, because Donald Trump is a master at it. And uh, we could discuss that later in the show. Winston, what was your big takeaway from either the interview uh, that Merrick Garland had with Lester Holt or the article in the um, Washington Post? Well, I, regardless of what Merrick Garland has just said, I think we can go on his, like, like Jay was saying, he's used the same sorts of words and he hasn't really, it's just kind of like just teasers about what's going to uh, come down. But, you know, when uh, I had heard, oh, is there some grand jury being assembled? He has said all along that he, that no one too high, no, you know, that we will, no one is, is immune from, uh, you know, uh, investigation and prosecution in, in these matters. Um, that may be true, but does the nation at the end of the day have the stomach for it? And, you know, Lawrence Tribe had a, um, a uh, an interesting interview uh, on July 22nd, where he said, uh, nothing could be more dangerous to the country than not holding Donald Trump accountable for his role on the January 6th attack. NPR had a poll out about the same day. It was maybe the 20, 21st of, uh, of July uh, last week. And it was talking about how people perceive these things. And uh, based on, uh, you know, Republicans said there, there's 44% were watching the hearings uh, a lot or some of the time. Um, Democrats, 80%, and independents, 55 Overall, 58% of people were paying attention to the January 6th committee hearings. This actually is really uh, startling to me, because although we've we hear about the Nielsen ratings and whatnot, but actually people are paying attention to this, according to NPR, you know, and their their survey that they did with uh, PBS and Marist poll. So while we might think that our our uh, countrymen and women are are maybe asleep at the wheel on this, they're not. They're they're interested in it, and they are paying attention. And what's happened is that, that you know six and ten said in that that Marist and uh, NPR poll is that they don't think Donald Trump will face any charges. So uh, and half of respondents said that they, he should be charged with a crime, including nine and ten Democrats, but only 10 percent of Republicans. Independents are split 49 to 46 percent. Well, that's half and half. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, if he does do something, it's going to be seen as absolutely partisan. But in this environment with the Supreme Court and 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 the way that the Congress has been run and all the shenanigans going on all the way around, it'd be hard. Uh, you could it, that would be very easily spun into something. Now, what I think what what Lawrence Tribe was on is he said he has to be Merrick Garland has. To, it's not if, but how quickly he needs to move against Donald Trump. How do we hold Donald Trump accountable without putting him in prison? Because we don't put presidents in prison in this nation. It's just even if the on has, house arrest. Uh, well, how how about if if I don't know? I mean, you you guys know it's more. It's an ankle Warfare, bracelet. Could he not be found? You know. Uh, guilty of 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 what the January 6th committee has laid out so clearly of just a really egregious behavior by a president, a, a, a new category. Yeah, you know? Let me jump into that. Let me jump into that because I listened to Lawrence Tribe last night on um, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell's show, and he was very, very pointed to the fact that uh, Merrick Garland seems to be pointing in the direction of obstruction of a federal election process. And, you know, there could be four or five different potential charges. One, uh, potential criminal charges could be the following. Defraud the U.S. government. Well, how is that? 
uh, fake, the fake elector scheme. That's defrauding the United States government. Number two, obstruction of a federal election process. That's the one that Merrick Garland seems to be sniffing and pointing in, in the direction of. Number three, incitement of a violent insurrection of the U.S. Capitol. That's pretty hard to prove. That has to show a really direct link with the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and all those wingnuts. And last but not least, uh, conspiracy of sedition. Uh, yeah, pretty hard charge to prove, although the Department of Justice did prove it with um, one of the insurrectionists that broke into the Capitol. Uh, they, they did charge and uh, they got a conviction on conspiracy of sedition. So those are the four main ones. And uh, it seems to be that uh, Mayor Garland might be looking at the, the, the interference of a federal election process. So it, let's just assume that this all goes to court. It goes before a grand jury. Evidence is presented, which I don't think we would hear if it's a grand jury, right? It's all done sort of in, in, in secret, isn't it? But even if it were an open court, the court of public opinion is ongoing right now. The January 6 hearings have shifted people's opinions. So in the court of public opinion, Donald Trump has been found by the majority of Americans to be unfit for a second term. And this is true for Republicans that don't want him to run. I mean, likewise, the Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run, but he will if he but needs won't to. won't it take an indictment for that to stick? That's my question. Uh, if you don't want him to be able to legally run for president again, yes, but but people don't want to see trials, even with this egregious behavior. I mean, we've never had this this happen before. So how do we face this? I think if he were found guilty of, let's just say, you know, uh, calling up and asking for another 11,000 votes or whatever it was, or twisting them, we all know this, what what's out there. And some people view it as, uh, you know, they're they're viewing the January 6th as an isolated incident rather than four years of, of, of cumulative, um, you know, misdeeds, or even just centered around the last two months before uh, you know, the uh, January 20th, when power was actually handed over. It seems as if the goal is just to say this fellow should not run again. Um, even if he runs, I don't think that America has the stomach for him. But even if he were to run, that there be some sort of understanding that if he were found guilty, his sentence would be commuted to zero days um, to just living just living with that sentence because that's the goal. But yeah, but still convicted, have, still convicted, convicted. But you know, he was also tried twice for uh, in the in the um, for impeachment, and and th and we would come up with the same thing. So we have to be very careful here that this that we recognize what's happened as a nation, but also recognize we need to move beyond this, and we need yeah. to recognize it. But we're not going to change hearts and minds of uh people that just don't that, that think this is just purely political nonsense and so how do we do that deftly and skillfully i think merrick garland has a lot uh to consider about how he goes about this but in the mm -hmm. court of public opinion the public has already weighed in and and there's many other people who can take the place of donald trump and joe biden for that matter in the 2024 okay. elections okay. thank you winston hey jay uh to, to winston's point are people looking to ensure that Donald Trump is prohibited from running for president of the United States in 2024, or are they actually looking for a conviction in, in jail time? Is there something in between that will um, soothe the American ire, particularly against Donald Trump and his, you know, his, his tactics of trying to obstruct the transference of power from one president to another? Uh, your thoughts? Let me break it down in three parts. <laughs> The first part is uh, everybody seems to be assuming that we don't have a rule about circumstantial evidence. I don't think the press is being accurate legally. Um, they suggest that you have to have all this hard copy evidence to convict uh, the guy of uh, you know suspicious conspiracy and and uh, and what. Um, we have four years of circumstantial evidence. We have so much circumstantial evidence that will blow your mind. Um, I, I had a, a, a dinner with a couple of long-term litigators, um, and I asked them, you know, do you think there's enough evidence from what you see on television to convict him? And the answer was instantly yes. And I feel that way too, instantly yes. Um, it's just that the public doesn't un understand, appreciate um, the legal definition and the, and the importance 
of the concept of circumstantial evidence. Uh, so that's one way that Trump is going to slip out of this. He's going to confuse them. And I must say, I don't think the media is doing a good job at clarifying that. Um, second uh, answer to my spate of questions I'm going to answer for you. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I think this is unprecedented. I think he engaged in uh, high crimes and misdemeanors and treason um, to the extent that it applies and seditious uh, conspiracy. And uh, when you start putting all the pieces together, connecting the dots as we like, he corrupted everybody in the government. He corrupted every agency. He corrupted the Secret Service. He corrupted everybody. He's a real felon. He's a real criminal. And I would put him in a jumpsuit and I'd put him in jail. And I'd put him in jail for a substantial period of time. I don't care that he was the president. Never my president. Was he your president? Whose president was he? He's a corrupt individual. And he used the office to manipulate, corrupt, and make and, and make advantage for his own personal interest. So um, I, I wouldn't give him two cents for the fact that he was president. He wasn't. Um, he goes to jail. Put me on the jury. I'm volunteering right now. Um, okay, that's uh, the second thing. Um, uh, let's see. What, what were your I, other... I, I guess you answered my question is, would... would um... Having them never being able to have the ability to run for office satisfy no, satisfy you, people. You, you and I'm getting the sense whether, that that's a no. You asked me whether you know uh, we needed to have a conviction um, of uh, you know participating in an insurrection or some other um, legal statement, uh, decision, conclusion to that effect to stop him under chapter or rather Fourteenth uh, Amendment uh, section three. Uh, the 14th Amendment, Section 3, does not have any execution provision. Uh, it's not well drafted in the sense that it doesn't say it goes to Congress or it goes mm -hmm. to court. It doesn't say anything like that. Um, it leaves it up in the air. Maybe they intended to do this. Um, but, but I think it's, it's fair enough that, um, that a, 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 a court uh, could and would say, assuming it wasn't a corrupted Trump judge, um, that he participated, he organized he organized it, man. He was the center of it. It wasn't some stunk from Wisconsin. It was him. Uh, he organized the insurrection. Um, circumstantial evidence included. And maybe you don't even need it in that case. So mm, I would say that sh it should be very clear to anybody who appreciates the truth that he, he falls within Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And a judge that certainly could say that. Uh, and I've told you before, you know, I think that there may be a standing issue. Who, uh, what John Q. Citizen could raise that to a judge? Does it have to be somebody who's running against him? Uh, who knows? But there's, there's nothing in it that says you have to have a, a, a judge, a jury, a trial. You can probably have it in the way of a, what is well, it, rule, a rule 56 federal rules of, of procedure declaratory judgment, where some judge says, I declare that section three of the 14th Amendment applies. And that's that. Now, of course, Trump will appeal that and be round, round the barn with the Supreme Court. Um, but I don't think you need an act of Congress. I don't think you need anything fancy. Uh, I think that you know the, the holding of one judge theoretically could do it. In any event, please understand that we are now entering into a new phase of American history. It is the phase of legal chaos and Trump wants that, likes that, and so forth. And he will oppose anything that runs against his favor. Uh, and he will appeal from every single decision, every interlocutory decision by every legal judicial officer um, that runs against him. So um, we're not going to get this resolved by November or by 2024. It's all going to be up in the air. This is very damaging. And this is his intention. All right. Thank you, Jay. Hey, Winston, um, in the uh, Washington Post article, it mentioned specifically that a couple of uh, Vice President Mike Pence uh, top aides have been cooperating with a grand jury. There hasn't been a grand jury that, that is currently underway uh, over these specific things that uh, could be, you know, the uh, elements of prosecution for Donald Trump. And they testified. Does that put... Mike Pence squarely in the eyes of the either the January 6th hearing committee uh, for a subpoena 
or the Department of Justice for a subpoena. He's threading the needle here. I mean, he wants to keep the base of which he was brought on the original ticket in 2016, those conservative, uh, religious, uh, sort of fundamentalist um, God nation family folks that joined and then just held their nose um, because he was paired with Donald Trump. So he's trying to go after that. And yet that's not that it is the base, but they have an overlay of now, now Trumpism on top of that. So there needs to be this peeling off of somehow these four, five, six years of overlay to get back to that original sort of um, uh, right wing religious uh, base that he does appeal to. Now that's not where uh, like an Adam Kitzinger uh, might be or Liz Cheney who don't really have the religious um, element of the science of, <clears throat> behind them. They're more, I will, we'll call it principled conservatism. Uh, and then there's the Trump factions. So can the can the understanding of or the impact of Donald Trump be peeled away from those two bases of that that uh, one Mike Pence might appeal to and two that uh, Liz Cheney might appeal to, and that we have those two factions of the party then reclaiming the Republican Party from what it's been under these last many years. I don't think it's okay. okay so I understand the political, uh, you know, weave he's trying to thread through here, but does it give him cover now to come forward and provide testimony, uh, knowing full well that uh, the cat's out of the bag and there's a federal criminal investigation about Donald Trump? And does he now just respond to any subpoena that's, that comes his way? And does he really open things up as John did, deed for, for Richard Nixon? Uh, is Mike Pence the new? the new John Dean, if you will, that really opens up this investigation and, and sheds light on uh, criminality. Well, it's an interesting uh, question. And he actually has a chance to really seize some power here. So if he really wanted to, and he really wanted to do this well, he could say, I was privy to these conversations. I was duped along with you, my fellow Americans. And I know that you are principled conservatives and that we were led astray and now actually i'm the i'm the uh uh the leader of the republican party as we once understood it or, or should be the leader and reclaim that mantle from where how it's been tainted in the eyes of the general public so that we have a chance of winning it's a it's something that he could do and, and make into a strength but his polls his poll ratings are so low right now However, it's it's not impossible that you know he's seen on some uh, grounds. I think rightly so that he did not buckle under that pressure. So he has some street cred out there, um, even among people that really are opposed to many of his positions um, on the left or even in the center. So he could really make some uh, lemonade out of lemons here if he were to do that. One thing I wanted to throw out is do. As you, we have had a national trauma, really. We're all in PTSD. We have put everything on this and add on COVID and, 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 and whatnot. But do Democrats really want to have Donald Trump as a martyr going into these um, uh, 2022 elections or 2024 elections where he's going to be fighting this tooth and nail the whole way there and, and just saying how corrupted? Yeah, the, the answer is process. probably because it'll take away from issues of the economy. It'll take away issues from, um, you know, immigration issues that the, the GOP should be focused on. Uh, so if Donald Trump is going to plant a flag in his own defense, that's the last thing I think Republicans want. That's one, that's one argument. The other one is that it will galvanize people and saying the whole system is so corrupt and unfair. Look how I've been treated. So that's a, an, another way to look at it. I think right now, I mean, you've got the uh, this uh, Respect for Marriage Act going through Congress, and I think the Republicans don't know whether the turn right, turn left, or, or go Correct. up or down. I agree. Because they're, they really don't want this to be about that. They want to get back that focus on inflation or whatever. But uh, well, Too late. It's in the Senate. They're going to have to decide Senate, one way so or the other. Going to yeah. have to, it's going to be one way or another, and it probably if, if if Mitch McConnell can find some way to punt on this, he would. But 
uh, or will. Um, but it's interesting. But if you make it all about Donald Trump, he will. He's such a good master. He's an excellent master at bamboozling the public and leading them in whatever path he wants them to do so. So uh, I'm not so sh it, it's I'm not sure that if they, right. so one and prosecuted that that's in the best interest of the nation or the Democrats um, specifically. OK, thank you. Uh, Jay, what's in the best interest of the nation? I think I know your answer is, but uh, is it is it conviction? Is it prevention from running in 2024? Or is it just um, we move along, you know, don't pay attention to this anymore. Uh, we have bigger problems here in this country, climate change, inflation, cost of living, immigration, crime, assault weapons, and the list goes on. What's in the best interest of this nation in your opinion? Truth and justice. We no longer have confidence in the country and the democracy. We cannot afford to turn our back. We cannot afford to be afraid of having truth and justice. This man has to be tried, convicted, and punished. If we don't do that, we carry it for the rest of our national lives. Um, all these other issues are subordinate to the fact that Trump raped the country. And he is not a Nixon, and he is not a Clinton. Uh, he is a, is a Hitler or a Putin, is what he is. And we have to stop him, not only for ourselves, but for the free world. Uh, he cannot be let go. He cannot be uh, free. Um, we have a point to make, and we must make that point before we look at anything else. We are in a crisis now. The only way you can deal with this cancer is to remove it. Um, I, I, I can't imagine any other solution that would work. And just, you know, just for us, we've been talking about this for how many, four or five years. Um, he has to be he has to be cut out, and I, I, we should not be afraid of him. It's like Merrick Garland says. I, I'm not sure I agree with what he's going to do, um, but you know, you, without fear or favor, we find the truth. We punish the wrongdoers. That's what the country is about. Let me tell you guys, if it was us, uh, we'd go to jail. We'd be wearing the orange suits. Why can't he wear the orange suit? Um, everybody has to be subject to the same rule of law. Anyway, I've said I've said this before. Well, let me just tag on to that. So if if a conviction is not obtained or even an indictment, does um, those independents, those who are non-Trump GOP, those Democrats, do they lose faith in the system and decide to check out, become apathetic? What happens? All of that may happen anyway. You know, I think we've we've come to the conclusion it's almost impossible to anticipate what's going to happen in the next six months, much less the next couple of years. We just have to steam ahead. And uh, one piece that's in our daily advisory today is taken off uh, the New York Times, Brett Stevens' opinion, um, which 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 uh, makes makes note of the fact that we do not have a national leader now. And that's another way of saying we're in leadership chaos. Um, we have to have a national leader to deal with this. And uh, I, I guess if we're in national chaos, and this is, as I said before, what Trump wants, uh, we'll never be able to resolve it. Somebody has to emerge. And uh, without that leader and without mm, the leadership of truth and justice, uh, the country is in big trouble no matter how you cut it. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about being afraid of him. I wouldn't worry about the chaos that he will create because he will try as hard as he possibly can to create chaos anyway. We have to find our moral compass and do what is right. Uh, he has put us off that track for, what, five years now, going on six. We cannot afford to be off that track for one second more. All right. Well, the New York Times states we have no leadership not unlike England and Italy right now. So I guess we're in fine company. All right, uh, we've run out of time. So Winston, let's go around and ask for your last thoughts on this topic and um, let it fly. Well, Jay makes some very compelling arguments as always. And uh, when I'm in my, I don't wanna call it pessimistic mode, but more of a, in his brain mode, I, I, I understand what he's saying. And then there's the other part of me that says, 
how do we how okay there's 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 a problem what's the solution is that the solution um it's one solution but is it the solution that will help and heal our nation i don't know maybe there's some varieties inside of there that are less than putting donald trump in prison but at least something that I'll, that allows some official recognition of what's happened at the end of the day uh, we have a lot of really big problems that we need to face and we don't need more um, we need to figure out what the best solution is regarding this particular topic and this particular man so that we can move forward in the best way possible and i don't have a clear mind on it actually i am of two or three or four minds on this like probably most of our country men and women are but um we will find out more as time goes by we'll see people are going to do what they're going to do merrick garland's going to do what he does and and things the chips will fall where they may but at the end of the day um i will hope that he has some wisdom in choosing the best for america overall and it's very hard uh work that we have to do ahead as a nation no matter what he decides or doesn't decide he's not in a position to make that kind of policy he's the chief lawyer representing the united states of america he should not be concerned with those issues of public policy he well and he referred Lester, to that last night when that's Lester right Holt, that's right when it's lester his... holt asked that directly that, that this could cut uh, cut the country in two he goes Basically, he said, that's not my problem. My problem is following the evidence to whoever, whenever, wherever. Right. And, it, and if that it, is it, a telegraph of what, no, no, it's it's Joe Biden's problem. And I don't think Joe Biden's doing a great job at it. It's all and, of and, our problem. It's all of our problem. Well, it's all our problem. It's yeah, the yeah, court's <laughs> problem. It's Congress's problem. Um, it's, the, it's the two uh, political parties' problem. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I want to make my last statement to compare this to a bicycle. Okay. Um, there were times, you know, when I rode bicycle on a regular basis and raced bicycle. And one of the fundamental rules about riding a bicycle is all about equipment. And you can go out and buy, um, you know, components, you know, like the pedals and the gears and all those things on a bicycle. Um, but it's meaningless if the frame is broken. Meaningless. You can spend a whole ton of money buying a new shifter. Meaningless if the frame is broken. Our frame, she is broken. We have to fix the frame. And frame is a play on words. It's the framework of the United States. It's the social, legal, community mesh that binds us together. It's the moral compass. We have to fix that first. And all these problems we have are second. First, we have to get a country again. Profound. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for your last words. I visualized uh, playing cards that were clipped on with clothesline clips on the spokes of a bike that might save the day, but you're right. It does come down to the frame. So we've run out of time. I'd like to thank you, Jay Fidel. Winston Welch, thank you for attending and providing your, your great thoughts. Won't you join us next week for America Issues, take one. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we hope to see you then. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.